Hi, I'm Paul Akers, and I'm at the Toyota Techno Museum in Nagoya, Japan. And this is the machine that Sakichi Toyota first improved for his mother to make her life easier. What you're about ready to watch is the story of Sakichi Toyota. It is one of the most fascinating and beautiful stories I've ever heard because Sakichi Toyota, the founder of Toyota, his purpose was to help people. So watch this story about him and you will be inspired. He is my hero. Hopefully you're really going to enjoy it. In a poor village near Lake Hamana, a young man's dreams begin to take shape. He has discovered his purpose in life. He has decided to contribute to the development of his country. Recently, patent regulations have been officially introduced, encouraging creativity and protecting inventors. The young man dreams that one day he too will become an inventor. At only 18 years of age, he is unaware that in later years, he will develop automatic looms for which he will be honored as one of the world's greatest inventors. Sakichi Toyota is at a turning point in his life. He begins to spend every waking moment working on his inventions. Sakichi Toyoda devoted 40 years of his life to his inventions. Over the years, he was awarded 84 patents and developed 35 utility models. By continually improving his looms, he developed seven major models. One of them attained such a high level of performance that it was regarded by many as impossible to improve. The G-Model Automatic Loom. Sakichi Toyota, the eldest son of a carpenter, was born on February 14, 1867, in the village of Yamaguchi, now known as Kosai City, which is located 230 kilometers southeast of Tokyo. The Toyota family was very poor. Sakichi and his younger brother even had to share the same textbooks at school. At the age of 11, after completing primary school, Sakichi began helping with his father's carpentry business. He was a curious boy, and whenever he had a spare moment, he would read every newspaper and magazine he could get his hands on. Sakichi was inspired by the image of Japan going through dramatic changes, the overthrow of the shoguns, the restoration of the Meiji Emperor, and the rebuilding of political and economic systems modeled on advanced Western nations. He dearly loved his country and often thought about the role he might play in its development. At night, he and other ambitious boys gathered in the village hall to study together. It was then that Sakichi came across a book that was to change his life. Samuel Smiles, Self-Help, an anthology of more than 300 true stories of Westerners who had pursued their own ideals. Sakichi was especially drawn to the story of Richard Arkwright, a carpenter like himself, who had devoted his life to improving the loom. As he read Arkwright's work, Sakichi was struck when he came upon the word invention. 
ロコモーティブにおけるがごとく共に皆前人を阻絶したれども信頼発明を成したり Invention The word stayed in his mind Sakichi had inspiration But what could he invent? With so little education How was he to find a worthwhile project? Still His dream of helping people continued to grow. In the region where Sakichi grew up, weaving cotton fabric was a typical side business for many families. The looms they used required both hands to operate. This laborious task was so inefficient that for all their hard work, Weavers could only earn a few pennies a day. That's it, Sakichi said to himself. I'll invent a new loom to make weaving easier for my mother. Surely it would help many others as well. That would be wonderful. But the villagers often spoke unkindly of young Sakichi behind his back. Look at him weaving away. What a funny thing for a boy to be doing. Sakichi doesn't do any real work. Do you suppose he's a bit touched in the head? It was very difficult for Sakichi. But when he felt depressed, He would listen to this sound. Sakichi's heart would go out to his mother. This would give him the courage and strength he needed to continue his efforts to improve the loom. I'll show them. I'll invent a wonderful loom. It'll be a valuable invention that will help so many people. In 1890, Sakichi toured the Japan Industrial Exhibition in Tokyo. He was fascinated and returned time and time again. The Western machines were clearly superior to those of Japan. Sakichi couldn't tolerate this. Somehow, he promised himself, I will build a great loom for my country. Day in and day out, Sakichi was completely devoted to his first invention. When flying a kite, his only pastime, his mind would wander to thoughts of his project. Even with the most modern loom, the weaver had to use both hands, one to throw the shuttle and the other to work the reed. Isn't there an easier way? Can't it be done with just one hand? Pull the reed and throw the shuttle. Pull the reed and throw the shuttle. That's it. I've got it. In May 1891, Saikichi Toyota was awarded his first patent. His invention, later called Toyota's wooden hand loom, raised efficiency by 50% with constantly high quality. It was very well received by the public. But Saikichi didn't stop there. His goal was to invent a power loop. This, however, proved to be an extremely difficult challenge. Sakichi noted his thoughts at that time. Through the ages, most inventors have been poor, estranged from others, and oppressed. But even after suffering many deprivations, a true inventor will succeed in achieving his goal. My experiences may not have been so bad, but I have certainly shed many tears to get this far. Those who dedicate themselves to invention must endure all of this. After six years of struggling to invent a power loop, at the age of 30, Sakichi married. With the support of his loving wife Asako, he diligently continued his work. His perseverance was rewarded with his invention of Japan's first power loop. His reputation as Sakichi the inventor soon spread far and wide. In 1897, 
the Okawa Cotton Textile Company was founded based on his invention. Sakichi, however, continued to devote himself to his dream by concentrating his time on developing better automatic looms. Every morning, he was up and working so early that not even his family knew if he ever went to sleep. But Sakichi's new colleagues began pressuring him, demanding to know why he was throwing himself into research instead of watching over business. Sakichi's conscience wouldn't allow him to market a product until it had been perfected. This always got him into trouble with his profit-minded colleagues. Since childhood, his single-minded desire to help society forced him to endure the hardships of an inventor. Now ostracized by his partners for his ideas and feeling betrayed, Sakichi turned his back on Japan. In 1910, he sailed from Yokohama for the United States. His memory would not let him escape from the harsh words of his former colleagues. Don't ever set foot in this company again. The vast North American continent unfolded before his eyes, filling his heart with new hope. He visited New York, Boston, and many other cities, studying American-made automatic looms. They're slow, the mechanisms are too complicated, and they break down all the time. The vibration is terrible, and the threads break easily too. These looms are nothing to be afraid of. I won't give up. Sakichi's newfound confidence led to a change of heart, and he decided to return to his homeland. I'll start all over again, on my own. In his journal, Sakichi wrote the following. Personal disgrace is trivial when compared to the enormous debt a man owes his native land. This great man put the needs of his country above himself. In January 1911, Sakichi returned to Japan. The evidence of his burning devotion to invention is still clear today. The M model power loom, which he invented in 1914, is still in use. In 1924, after years of dedicated effort, Sakichi Toyota perfected the G-model automatic loom, the finest of all. It performs smooth automatic shuttle changes while operating at high speed, setting a new world standard. This automatic loom is the finest in the world. Won't you consider giving your fat brothers a license? At that time, the Platt Brothers, a British loom manufacturer, led the world's weaving industry. In 1929, Platt acknowledged the superiority of Sakichi's machine. He had come a long way since when, at the age of 23, he had been ashamed by the inferiority of the Japanese machines displayed at the Japan Industrial Exhibition. It had been a long, hard journey, but at last, he was rewarded for all his efforts. After perfecting the G-model automatic loom, Sakichi went on to develop a completely new concept, the circular loom. Bold new ideas like this were part of Sakichi's ability to stay ahead of the times. On October the 30th, 1930, at 63 years of age, Sakichi Toyota's life ended, but his tireless creative spirit lives on.
障子を開けてみよう外は広いぞ A single thread from breaking, Sakichi Toyota changed the world. Be inspired, set a seemingly impossible goal. Go out and change the world.